Chapter 15. A Visit from My Mother Following Clarencio's recommendations, I tried to rebuild my strength in order to recommence my learning process. In the past, I might have felt offended at such seemingly harsh remarks, but under the circumstances, I remembered my past errors and felt comforted. The body's fluids drive the soul into deep slumber. Actually, only now did I realize that the human experience can in no way be considered just a game. The importance of incarnation loomed clearly before me, displaying splendors unknown to me thus far. Bearing in mind all the opportunities I had wasted, I realized that I didn't deserve the hospitality of Nasalar. Clarencio had plenty of reasons to have spoken to me so frankly. I spent the days immersed in profound reflection on life. Deep down, of course, I was very anxious to see my terrestrial home again. However, I refrained from asking for any more favors. The benefactors from the Ministry of Assistance were excessively generous to me. They guessed that my thoughts. If they hadn't afforded me the immediate satisfaction of my desire, it must have been because the time wasn't yet right. Thus, I kept silent, resigned, though I was somewhat sad. Lysias did whatever he could to cheer me up with his consoling remarks. However, I was going through that phase of inexpressible retreat when individuals are called by their innermost conscience to go within. But one day my kind attendant radiantly came into my room exclaiming, Guess who has arrived looking for you? His joyful face and shining eyes gave him away. My mother, I answered confidently. My eyes shone with joy as I saw my mother enter with outstretched arms. My son, my son, come to me, my dear one. I cannot say what happened next. I felt like a little boy who used to play barefoot in the sand of our garden while it rained. I held her tenderly and wept with joy, experiencing the most sacred rapture of spiritual bliss. I kissed her over and over. I held her in my arms and blended my tears with hers. I cannot say how long we remained entangled like that. She finally aroused me out of my rapture. Come, come, my son. Don't be so emotional. Excessive joy can harm the heart. But instead of carrying my dear old mother in my arms as I had done during the last weeks of her journey on earth, it was she who dried my flood of tears and led me to the divan. You're still weak, my little son. Don't waste your energy. I sat down beside her, and she tenderly laid my tired face on her knees, stroking my hair gently and comforting me in the light of sacred memories. I felt at that moment that I was the most fortunate man of all. I had the impression that my ship of hope had anchored in the safest of harbors. My mother's presence brought infinite comfort to my heart. Those minutes gave me the idea of a dream woven with a fabric of inexpressible bliss. Like a boy looking for details, I noticed that her clothes were a perfect copy of an outfit she used to wear at home. I recognized the dark dress, the woolen stockings, and the blue shawl. I gazed at her small head crowned with snow-white hair, at the wrinkles on her face, at her invariably sweet and calm eyes. With my own hands trembling with contentment, I stroked her dear hands and couldn't say even a single word. My mother, however, was stronger than I and spoke serenely. We'll never be able to thank God enough for such a great gift. The Father has never forgotten us, my child, how long we have been apart. But don't think that I have forgotten you. Providence at times separated hearts temporarily so they may learn divine love. On noticing that her tenderness was the same as ever, I felt the pain of my earthly wounds once again. Oh, how difficult it is to rid ourselves of residue brought from earth. How heavy is the imperfection accumulated over the centuries. So many times I had listened to Clarencio's healthy advice and Lysias's brotherly suggestions to refrain from feeling sorry for myself. Yet now, feeling the maternal tenderness, all my old wounds seemed to reopen. From weeping out of happiness, I passed to tears of anguish, bitterly recalling my earth earthly suffering. 
I didn't grasp the fact that her visit was not meant to gratify my whims, but was intended as a precious blessing of divine mercy. I relapsed into old habits and wrongly concluded that my mother ought to continue as the repository for all my complaints and endless grievances. On earth, mothers are almost always mere slaves from their children's point of view. Rare are children who recognize their mother's devotion before losing her. Holding on to the same old wrong idea from the past, I lost myself in the land of painful confessions. My mother listened to me in silence with an expression of indescribable melancholy on her face. With moist eyes, from time to time, she held me tightly to her heart. Then she spoke caringly, Oh, my son, I'm fully aware of the instructions ministered to you by our benevolent Clarencio. Don't complain. Let us thank our Father for blessing us with this meeting. We are now in a different school where we are learning to be children of the Lord. When I was your mother on earth, I didn't always provide you with the best guidance. I, too, am working to readjust my heart. But your tears are dragging me back to the landscape of human emotions. Something is trying to cause my soul to backslide. I would like to agree with your complaints, to build you a throne as if you were the best creature in the universe. But such an attitude would be out of accordance with the new life lessons we are now learning. Such gestures are forgivable on the physical plane. But here, my son, we must attend to the Lord before anything else. You aren't the only discarnate man righting his wrongs, nor am I the only mother that feels far from her loved ones. So, our suffering doesn't improve us because of the tears we shed or because of the hurts that bleed but because of the gateway of light it offers to our spirit in order to make us more humane and wise. Tears and hurts make up part of the blessed process of expanding our purest sentiments. After a long pause during which a deeper awareness was solemnly warning me, my mother proceeded, If we can enjoy these moments in expressions of love, why should we waste them in the shadows of self-pity? Let's rejoice, my son, and work ceaselessly. Adopt a new mental attitude. Your trust in my caring comforts me, and your filial tenderness brings me sublime happiness. But I can't go back to the way things used to be. For now, let's love each other with a great and sacred divine love. Her blessed words woke me up. I had the impression that invigorating fluids originating in maternal sentiment were uplifting my heart. My mother gazed at me kindly with a beautiful smile on her face. I rose respectfully and kissed her forehead, feeling that she was even more beautiful and loving than ever.